Welcome to Breakfast with the Masters. It's the 23rd of February. Thank you for reminding me to start recording. One more time. We've been working on an opportunity that presents itself on a regular basis in many charts. It's not the only opportunity, but it's an opportunity that is as close to trading like Boom Boom as I can teach you. It's not talent. It's not intuition. It's chart reading. And we've been going over it the last three or four sessions. Some of you realize it that by now, and some of you, when I say it now, just go are just going, oh, really? It, I thought it was similar, but now you're telling me it's the same. Yes. Was Boom Boom also so huge in his order size? In fact, did he actually affect the chart bars? I can't answer that question, Timmy. Timmy, you've asked me that question about my orders. I don't know the answer because if I took my orders away, would the market still turn? I don't know. It's impossible for us to know, right? It's, it, it is what it is. I don't know what changes the market's direction. And if I took my orders out or Boom Boom's orders out, would the market have changed in those areas? I don't know, but I can tell you, I'm going to show you, and, you know, this. I'm not trading the fund here, these last four trades, and yet the opportunity looks exactly the same. So, I don't know. Draw your own conclusions. Could you, okay, now the baseball analogy. There's something called putting your foot in the bucket that means that as the ball is coming close to the plate you step forward with your back foot as you swing at the ball and what happens is that's that moves the center of your mass forward as the ball comes right in contact with your bat and then the ball goes from coming at you and changes directions and heads away from you. So the vector turns around. Well, rotating your hips is, is a change in mass. That, okay, I don't want to get too much into baseball. Yeah, David says all my years of competitive martial arts comes into play in what you just said about baseball. It's about anything where you're changing your center of gravity or mass Okay, but on top of that, <coughs> you can interact with something coming at you. <coughs> excuse me. And it's part of Newton's laws of motion. Okay, the thing is, in motion, all you do is transfer. Let me say this, and you can think about it. Your rotational energy to it when you swap your mass, and that keeps it in motion just in the other way in the other direction okay and here's a here's an explanation from you King about how this opportunity works price breaks out of a tight coil and comes back again and as it gets to the top of that tight coil and starts to it breaks out as it, and it peaks up as it comes back again that's the transfer your transfer of mass and is it starting to come back it is either going to turn as it comes back or it's going to make a new high or a new low in whichever direction it was going in which case you're going to get stopped out does that make sense but as it turns and comes back that's when you want to interact that's the opportunity then the answer is it either is an opportunity or it isn't, and that's why we use stop losses. Okay? It's never going to be 100%. doesn't need to be. But this opportunity is as close as I can get to teaching you to trade at the absolute bottom. And I can it's not talent. I can teach you to recognize it. Okay? That's what we're working on. Any questions before we go? And we're going to go on a merry hunt here. And I've been trying to switch back between time-based and tick-based and time-based and tick-based. But it, unfortunately, it's also at the whim of when I see the trade. 
right, so this is natural gas, 189 ticks. When you trade natural gas, you can trade front month because every month just rolls to the next month. Or you could put up the front month chart. I don't care. If you try and recreate this and it's not exactly the same, that's the nature of tick data. There's nothing I can do. Somebody here, I can't remember who, sent me an email saying how to, mine is not exactly the same as yours. It isn't, sorry. I can only tell you that it's Eastern time. No problem. Hey, Mama. Um, set your data to Eastern time. All sessions. It's the best you can do. It should still be fairly close. <clears throat> Isn't 189 too fast? Depends on the market, Peter. Sometimes, it, I mean, we trade 189 tick natural gas all the time. For those of us who haven't got tick data, is there a time frame that we can use to approximate these charts? Robbie, it looks something like about six minutes, but you're going to see lots of stretched out dead periods. But yes. I th and I think I showed that in an IB seminar. You're just going to have to practice and see, for example, in a night period, which is coming up, I'll show you, that you know there'll be a bunch of bars there that here will be only two bars, and you might get 20 bars, okay? <clears throat> All right. So you can see price. This is when I'm starting to do my stock okay so it's a, a couple days prior to when I'm actually going to trade does everybody understand that I don't watch the 189 tick every tick for five days I just don't when I pull it up I go I roll back a couple days I make sure my chart is blank and I start to draw because I'm trying to get in step with the market and see if there's any logic to it everybody gets that right I know Aaron's new we uh, Peter's fairly new. Peter's going to drag Nick here eventually, if he's not here already, etc. Okay, so notice, I mean, that this is as much data as I'm going to have on my screen, maybe less, right? Maybe that. That's about what I watch, which means I don't squeeze it in to go look at what is over there. I don't. I don't care. Even when I'm starting out, I go, okay, here's a low. Let me just use that. Hey, Nick, how are you? All right, now. Price. I could mark this as a low. I'll go ahead and just do that for good order's sake. We leave double bottoms and then take off to the upside. Okay. I connect the first nice pullback. This is what we would call a BC. You aren't looking back and considering larger mountains and valleys just to have that in the back of your mind. No, I don't even care, Timmy. It's meaning. It's meaningless. It's cold in Wisconsin. That's what I heard. And for those of you that don't know, I'm actually going to sneak a quick trip to Chicago. Um, and now it looks like I'm going I'm like I'm to have to stop at the exchange for half a day and see if I can knuckle my way around. But, yeah, I'm hoping it's going to warm up. 15 below, great. Makes me feel real good. Jeannie's mother is not well, so we're going to just go for four days and visit her mom for a couple of days. And I'm going to sneak away for half a day and go to the exchange and see if I can figure out what we can put together. And Al, maybe I'll get in touch with you and you and I'll go meet at the Renaissance for half hour. Okay, so on this this is the first BC. It's a nice pullback. Okay? So I connect this low with this low. For those of you that don't know, this is called a line of maximum excursion. Sometimes it ends up as support and sometimes it becomes a center line. Both are important, okay? It doesn't, I'm not going to erase it just because it's not support. I'm going to leave it up there. I don't know what it's, which one it's going to turn out to be. Does that make sense? Extremely underused tool. 
this is my work not Andrew's work where did I get it from I got it from observing the lower parallel of a shift a modified shift median line but then I began to apply it to all pullbacks off of bottoms and realized hey you know what that's the power of a modified shift not the median line but the the modified shift median line that is that's what gives a modified shift power okay so I don't even draw the modified shift I don't care where the A is anchored it's this line that is often the useful piece okay all right so we come up price pierces it can't get up to it falls back leaves a low when it leaves the low, of course, I put out an advanced multi-pivot line. Don't be lazy. Draw these. They come into play. You can see here on this high, I put in the advanced multi-pivot line. Okay. I've now boxed in price. I want to know how price reacts to these areas. I'm looking for logic. I want logic to build up. Okay. Again, large move ahead. First pullback. Put out the line of maximum excursion everybody get that if it's too if your screen becomes too cluttered you can always erase it but start out with it and see if it gives you what you're looking for and at this point I don't know what I'm looking for okay that's the honest truth okay well, let's see what we get out of it not that Anybody tell me what's going on right now? And um, for those of you who have never traded natural gas, you can't answer the question. What's going on? I know it's been a while since we've done natural gas, but yeah, we get this weird. Uh, yeah, natural gas has this weird, crazy volatility, cha cha. Okay, yeah, it's like yen bars, and it gets crazy. It's like a shakeout, and then then price will go back and resume its normal volatility. It's almost like it's resetting itself. Okay? So when you see this, it's a great time to be flat or be taking your profits. It's not a great time to enter it. The the bars are hugely volatile relative to anything else. Just wait till it settles back down. Okay? But we see that all the time in natural gas. And don't go back and try and count the number of bars between each one or how many days it is. It's a waste of your time. It just happens. When it happens, it happens. Okay. So, I mean, look at the bars. They're ultra huge. And sometimes it happens overnight. Sometimes it happens at 8 o'clock in the morning. It happens when it happens. Look at these bars. So it's natural gas, unusual volatility. It generally resets to normal swings fairly quickly. And then you can go back to your business. But take a look at your line of maximum excursion. See how it's working? Now, if you're crazy and you want to get long, okay. you got to test and retest and it would have worked. Those aren't bars that I really want to, sh want to play with because, of course... Your go no go at this point is a point and a half max. That's the maximum size I use on 189 ticks. I use either a buck or a buck and a half. And how's that? How does that stack up relative to these bars? Does that make any sense on any of them? So that should wave you off. I mean, do you want to play that game? Yeah, you could. But this should scare the hell out of you. Even though it's in, you know, going in the direction that you want. So, me, I just, I just sit on the sidelines and go, all right, just let me know when you're done. Okay. So, still not done. And, you know, was, did that buy make money? Sure, it did. If you want to play that, that's fine. Now, here's our line of maximum excursion from the first remember we're getting higher lows see it here's our line of maximum excursion from the first higher from the first low 
So this is the higher low here. What do we get? We come right up to it. So, so far it works pretty good, doesn't it? And turn. It's like a median line, yeah. And you can see price close on its high, no follow through, so I put out advanced multi pivot line. Okay, at this point, it respected the center line perfectly. Yes? Now, if I was further along in what's going on, maybe I'd be interested in being short here. Somewhere in here, if you had a stop, okay? But I'm going to use this as an alternating pivot. I want to hear either left or right. We'll sort it out later, okay? Depends on whether or not I want the width. Whether this is a B, C, or an A. We don't know what this is yet. We know it's an alternating pivot. Maybe this will be an alternating pivot. I've got ones here for counts, but remember, short because we're at an extreme. No, I'm just telling you, Manuel, if you were hunting for a short, this would be an area because it's respected this line of maximum excursion that you might want to take a look for an opportunity. I'm still not ready to trade. I'm still a day away or so from trading, okay? Same thing down here. If you were hunting for a long, once it respects your line of maximum excursion, you might be using retests of that line. Okay? There's some problems here because of the volatility, so I wouldn't. But this is my bar by bar getting ready exercise, right? So I'm not ready to trade yet anyway. I'm trying to see if price sets up conditions and then follows logic, it'll make me feel like I'm in step with the market. I'll ask you the question. Is price respecting the lines that I drew? Okay, so since it is, I'm in tune with, I'm getting in tune with this market pretty fast, right? Makes, starting to make good sense. If it doesn't, I'm probably pretty quick going to move to another market. Tim, I know you like to start and stay with the same time period chart. Do you look at the 240 or daily before you drive in with the 89? Absolutely not, Peter. I never mix time frames, ever. Pick your time frame that you're going to trade. If you're a 189 tick natural gas trader, that's all you look at. It'll just confuse you. I don't care what the trend is on the 240s or the dailies. Or the 60s. It's meaningless. Okay? All you're going to do is confuse yourself. I know you've been taught this. Look in the mirror, find that part of your brain, and scrub it clean. Okay? Anything that you're going to trade, figure out what the best time frame for you are, is, and don't look at other time frames. Period. All right, so we pull back and test our bottom. So far it's holding. Leave a high, test it. Okay, now we down tick. It's not a gap. This is New York time prime. That guy sold all he could, and the first bid was actually a tick lower, and he hit it and kept on selling. Okay, so now they're down ticking it. So we'll see what happens to our lower line of maximum excursion. Well, goodbye. But it could be a center line. Retest our prior bottom. It holds basically. Now we're looking for a top. And you can see now we're making Ever since we got up here from the original line of maximum excursion, we've done nothing but make lower highs and lower lows. Okay? If I was looking at the daily, this is actually a trade. You could make this. Okay? The average trade in natural gas, Peter, is seven or eight handles. 
on 189 ticks. But if you're worried about the 240s or the dailies, you can't make this trade. But this trade is worth $800 a contract. You follow me? So when I squish all of that, all of these moves into a daily bar, that's fine. But there was lots of money to be made intraday that had nothing to do with what's going on in the daily. Okay, if you want to trade daily, trade daily. That's fine. But then don't look at this. All right, so we're making higher high or lower highs, lower lows. We continue to make new lows. We're pulling back, and we're boxed in. And what we want to know is, is this pattern going to continue? Okay, what's the first break since we got up here? First break to the upside. And notice that we all only broke back one swing. I'll be more interested if we break two swings. That's my rule. And we come down and test the low. Wide range bar, test the low. Wide range in this, in tick, means that it's illiquid. It doesn't mean that it's not the same as a wide range bar and time-based. Okay? That means it takes this amount of space to get 189 ticks in versus a bar like this, which has high activity. So in essence, uh, I guess these are about as small as they get. These bars are, in essence, the wide range bars of a time-based chart, okay? It's like the opposite of time-based. Break two swings for this time frame or in general, it, that's my rule in general, Al. It, it doesn't mean that breaking one swing is important. It's just that for me to go, okay, now we've got a real change in behavior. Let me put it to you this way, Al. Here's a better way for me to say it. If I'm, if I'm boxing in stops, I'm two swings back, not one. Now, that first break doesn't mean that things hasn't haven't changed and we saw that in um, the Canada example that I did um, in the midday the other day and I did it uh, a couple weeks ago with you guys in more detail but I'm generally gonna hide my stops two back not one so all we've really done at this point is taken out this minor high and retested the bottom. Do you see that? So, hey, Ouija, how are you? Rangy, yes. We really haven't done anything. Ouija, we're thinking about passing the hat and having you kidnapped and brought to Chicago, by the way. All right, here we go. Oh, don't be sorry. I get it. Ouija, it's okay. We're, it's a, it was just simply a joke. Everybody wants to meet everybody. Okay, that's all. So now we're testing that high, and that high gets taken out. So really, we've got expanding pivots, right? And I don't mean them in a, I'm curious if this is an expanding spiral given the interaction of the first maximum excursion. Okay. So I've gone from an area that was very logical, right? Made a lot of sense to me. I might have been interested in trading if it was live. I would have been, might have been interested in trading in these areas. If this type of action continues, am I going to keep watching natural gas? And and why? Simple answer. Waste of focus, not doing anything and there's no what? It's not logical, catch it when it becomes logical again, right? There's no opportunities here. 
right? So I can't do anything with this. So if I was watching it live, and again, I'm not. I'm coming back and to my replay. If I was watching it live, I just go to another chart. Don't sit there mesmerized at a screen and go, um, there must be something here. If you can't find something, move on. You can always come back later. Okay? Even if it means getting up and going doing and doing something else. Don't waste your focus, energy, and time on something that isn't an opportunity. It's like trying to use logic on a teenager. Kath, I'm in the middle of that. Please don't make me laugh. All right, so we're making marginal new highs. Come up, make it high, and then close on our low. And what happened? Oh, okay. Try to get back up and fail. All right, so this becomes an interesting and potential alternating pivot. Do you see that? But only if this starts to sort itself out. If it doesn't sort itself out, I'm just going to just chuck the whole damn thing. Okay, then we go top to bottom in one run, no pullbacks. That's interesting. It's not tradable yet, but it's more interesting. Am I the only one that wants to know if these two bottoms hold? Every every retail trader and every hedge fund guy that and all the people that draw horizontal in the world have these two lines connected, right? And if you're trading five minutes or 15 minute bars, you're going to see these bottoms and you're going to connect them with a trend line, right? It's we don't care unless you're doing a mountain trade, but there's no stop over here for a mountain trade. But all the retail traders that end up blowing up their accounts this is like finding gold for them boy if it breaks this low I'm gonna be a breakout seller right or boy I'm gonna buy right in front of this line because it's held right <coughs> so we know there's probably gonna be a lot of orders sitting here buy order, sell order, something, but there's going to be activity around here probably. And you can see what happened. Let me just buy in front of the trend line because it's been held. When did I actually mark the A point? Probably there. Okay. People probably saw the trend line. They're buying at or in front of the trend line because it's a trend line, and trend lines really work, right? Not really, but that's what you guys are taught. Or when it breaks out, let me get short. That's what you guys are taught. Momentum traders, right? Okay, so come down, make a low. Okay, this washed out all the guys that got long in front of this. A, a lot of people got short here. They were very happy for, let's take a look. 1038, 1038, 1038, 10, guess what? They were very happy, except for in about 15 seconds, they're at a loss. That didn't work so well, did it? So the, in 15 seconds, everybody that got long here got washed out. And everybody that got short here is wet, it was wet in their pants. Okay, so we'll see if they get any hope. All right, so here... This bar is 1042, so here, they got four minutes of pleasure, although right here they weren't exactly happy, right? <coughs> now we're making a new low, <coughs> about three minutes later. 
but then we close on our high and we're right back up to all these people at a loss so let's back up what are the positions short or out as you do your charting work or as you watch the market I'm gonna ask you Amanda as this bar prints do you actually say to yourself okay everybody's short fill in the blank or do you only think about it when I ask you be honest Okay, good. And this is I do think about positions. As we, especially as we get these extremes or as we retest areas, you should be asking yourself, what are the positions? Yeah, I think about who's getting hurt. Yeah. What are the positions and what are the consequences of their positions? And is there an opportunity for me? Me. Parentheses, Amanda. Parentheses, right? Does that make sense? everybody what's the book and can I make money off of it okay so within four minutes these guys are right back staring at losses nobody's short at a good price and when these we get two bars in a row that close on their highs okay I add a bunch of alternating pivots this one goes for the first alternating pivot this one goes with the second alternating pivot and this one I think is a is a new alternating pivot okay and remember you can always come back and unless this is a C you can always come back and find the ones you want the B's and the A's okay just like when you see me write down one two three I it's almost I can't even think of the last time I wrote down one first generally I'm looking at two or three and writing down the one after I see two or three do you follow me this is like Penn and Teller I'm telling you how the magic trick works anybody not anybody not know who Penn and Teller is Okay, if you don't, yeah, I figured Ouija might not. Okay, they are some of the best magicians in the history of magic, but here's how they do their magic show. First, they show you how the trick works. They actually show you how the trick works. Okay? Then they do it in front of you. Again, after they've shown you exactly how it works. But they add a twist so that you actually have to think about what the hell they just did. Even though they showed you exactly what they were about to do. They show you, for example, the misdirection they're going to use. Then when they use it, you still have to go back and think about, how. okay, how did he do that? And they've actually encouraged people to put videos out on the internet that, and point out exactly how they did the trick in the end okay they want to debunk exactly what the magic is I'm trying to explain to you guys it's not magic I don't go oh here's one here's two and here's three I look at the second or third run and then I go okay where's the first okay here's the first one okay this makes sense now I've got the one I've got the two I've got the three maybe I've got them on both sides okay now which one is gonna win I do have marked out before one of them wins but don't think that I'm able to magically understand where one is. Does that help? Don't beat your head against the wall going, how did he know that the one is there? And I know it would like me, make me look cooler and more mystical if I told you that I always, if I knew that shit, but it's not true. So I won't, I'm not going to teach you that. I want you to be able to learn 
how I trade. Okay. I don't want to be a cult classic. I want to be a good teacher. Okay. So you can see anybody that was long got stopped out. The people that were breakout sellers, they're just not getting any love. And now we're back up here. So they're all at a loss. Do you all see that? So people are either losing money or have lost money and don't want to play. And now the people that sold breakouts are done, right? So both sides got it in the you-know-what. I like that. Sorry. And this makes me interested. Now I'm starting to get interested in this chart again because people are getting screwed. That's when there's, when this happens, this is when there's money to be made. Because people get all turned around, right? Those of you that are mentoring, how many times have I told you, if you get stopped out, or if you make a trade and you realize it's wrong and you get out, don't jump into the next trade. Take a time out. How many times, have, you guys in mentoring, you, how many times have I said that to you? Just stop. Don't don't give them more money. Have I? Has anybody ever heard me say that? Okay, so think about this. Okay, so Robbie says, yes, you do say that. It's too tempting to get right back in, but switch sides. Okay, all right, so in lots of class as well. Okay, so think about it. If you just got screwed because you're long, and then you went short because you're taught that if it breaks out to the downside, you want to play, and now you're getting stopped out again, is this the time for you to trade? You're running into walls. You're falling over the cat. You're dropping your glass. You're an emotional wreck. That's right. Okay? You're not smooth and rounded. That's impulse trading. But those of us that are sitting waiting in the weeds, yes, if there's two people, right, there's a risk manager and a trader, and the risk manager is going to say to you, uh-uh, you don't trade now. You sit back and wait. All right, so if you didn't fall for the trend line and you didn't fall for the breakout, the rest of the market is drunk at this point. Right? That's when we want to step in if there's an opportunity, right? And the book is clear. Exactly right, Scotty. Okay. So we come up and make a high. Break the high. And continue high. So just as fast as we went down, we're right back up. Do you see that? Valley filled. Done. Boom. And lots of people hurt. Wish I had been trading natural, natural gas this day, but this is my replay. But I wish I'd been trading in here. But what am I always looking for? Can you guys tell me? I'm always looking for opportunity, yes, and something else, something even more basic, a, a more general statement. Well, I guess I guess it's not more general than that. Yeah, extremes, sure. Repeatable patterns, right? Repeatable patterns. Okay, we've been talking about one for three or four sessions. And I just saw, well, I'll do, I'll do this real quick. I just saw this happen. Okay. So that's going to be in the back of my mind. So let's see what price does. Okay, the valley doesn't the valley base doesn't hold. We make a new high. Test it. Pull back, test it, head down. Okay? See it?
when we break this low yes when we break this low so one two three four five right here we're closing on our low I've got a red median line to draw actually I have a red and a green and they're both big so it doesn't matter I don't have to go back and and roll them back so thank you for reminding me um, there's my green and my red should be close <clears throat> So why am I interested in drawing at this point? Because I just saw a lot of people get hurt. And I want to see if I can put some logic together. Because I know this market... Let me say this. In, I can't say it in a nice way. This market is filled with pigeons. Right, people ripe to get plucked. Okay? And yes, absolutely, Peter. I'm expecting another repeatable pattern. Yep. I don't know where it's going to come from, but I am expecting it. <coughs> and by the way, this might have been tradable. I didn't. I'm just finishing my replay, but this would have been another tradable area. Okay. Also, price is broadening, so the opportunity is getting better for the risk manager. Absolutely, Matt Cube. Very good. As price gets wider and cleaner like this, the opportunities become easier to spot. Okay? So now I'm going to look. You remember over here? Take a look at this. People getting hurt, getting long here, then getting washed out. People getting short, then getting hurt here. Do you see all this mess right here? Okay, we're not going to tear this apart, but you can go back and look at it yourself if you want. This is an opportunity area. Um, I haven't. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. You'll see why I anchored here. Robbie, there's there's very little difference between anchoring here, or here. You can choose your poison. You can anchor here. You can anchor on the far right. You can anchor in the middle. Okay. Can you see the count number left? Okay, I'm going to squeeze in, but I don't normally do this. But I'll squeeze in several times. But there's one. There's two. And okay, there's one, one, two, two. And right here is when I started to go. You know what? I'll bet there's a one, two, three coming. Is this top formed? Which is also, Robbie, why I marked the tops where I marked it. So I've got one up here at the extreme. One, two. This could be one as well, but I like this better because it's higher. And we're going to be making lower lows lower highs okay lower lows lower highs with me I would be expecting a wash to be returned back to 286 to 287 uh, okay I don't know I don't, okay let's watch that area then for you okay all right so let's see let's see what we get so broaden this back out I'm expecting Look, I'm expecting lower highs and lower lows. I'm expecting ax I'm I'm expecting action Jackson down here. Because we went straight up, down, went straight up. I right, what do you think I'm looking for? Anybody? More of the same. I I don't Again, you say he doesn't want to get short, stop short. First of all, it's only one stop if that's an opportunity. But second of all, 
I'm just looking for repeatable patterns, okay? But this area, if you if you want to know whether or not you're looking in the right area, this is a good area, this is a good area, okay? At the extremes, okay? This isn't where I traded, but this is an area and this is an area, okay? I'm still doing recon, but we're getting close to when I went live. I should start marking my chart where I started... <coughs> when I where I switched from recon to real but all right so we come up and leave a high and head lower and note that I connected this is the first pullback see it and this red median line is a big fat median line so it's very difficult for me to get all the way back out here and the green is really big it's very difficult for me to get all the way out here isn't it Okay, one, two, threes are not a pattern. One, two, threes are just a it's just a way to keep your place in the action, okay? The you'll see what the repeatable pattern is. It's a rhythm count. Thank you, Timmy. That's exactly right. I'm trying it's like have you ever have you ever waltzed, Keith? It's one two three one two three one two three two three da 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 da. Okay, and you know when you're twelve and you're practicing, or well fourteen, you're practicing going to your first. Keep your day job, thanks, Tim. You got you know, and your mom's trying to teach you because you're going to your first prom with a girl. She's telling you, just under your breath, go one, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, three, two, two. Yeah, two left feet. So you actually say under your breath, one, two, because you don't want to step on her feet. Right? You got no rhythm. No offense, guys. You're a white guy. You got no rhythm. It's all, it's all you can do. <clears throat> you want to dance, but it's not in you. Okay, so I expect price to do the similar action. So watch price now. Now I'm actually watching live. So I've got a two and a two in. I've got a nice line of, ma of maximum excursion going on right here. And again, I can use it for resistance or support. I can use it as a center line and I can use it for one other thing. What else? Okay, I'll take entry, but there's a, a better description. It measures speed. Okay, that's a fourth thing. What else? Timing, yes. Timing. All right. When I put it together with other lines, it sometimes gives me near exact timing. All right, so price is coming down the slope that it just built. See it? See, did you see that? It built the slope. Now it's just coming right back down it. If it's a repeatable pattern, let me say it again. If it's a repeatable pattern, I expect this kind of nonsense over here somewhere and probably at a lower, slightly lower level. Manuel, so isn't that aligned with too much slope? I didn't say I was going to trade here, did I, Manuel? I just explained four, at least four things that I can use it for. Okay? So this line could be a center line it could also be timing for me I'm not getting short here in the middle of price action and it didn't work for me up here right if I was going to use this line to trade I'd be using it in this trading opportunity right here but I didn't use this trading opportunity so this line is for something else follow me yes or no memo okay so watch price unfold. Again, I am looking for a repeatable pattern. You've seen the pattern in the last three or four sessions. I'm looking for a, I've got a two and a two. I'm expecting a three and a three. These have been lower highs and lower lows. So I'm expecting a repeatable pattern either down here or down here, depending on which three works. Does that make sense? 
And I'm probably going to see some people, we didn't talk about it the last three or four opportunities, but I'm probably going to see some people get caught that can't dance one, two, three, one, two, three. They're going to, you know, they're going to fall over their feet. And that's when I'm at my best, when people are all turned around, right? So here we come down the slope. <coughs> Testing the red median line. Pull back. Add our line of maximum excursion. Okay, do you remember these from last session? Closes on its high. No follow through. This one actually closes on its low. Paired bars. These are mirror bars as well, but we pull back. Okay, we're on our high. See it? And close on our low. Paired bars. Um, are they a subset of mirror of mirror bars? They're just another repeatable pattern. They're just they're just something that you can see, Gina. And when you see them start to just, if you go back and look, these are. Here's a sloppy group of them, but they, they tell you that the buyers are losing. The buyers are losing. Okay? That's all they're for. I, okay? It's short. Price is flipping. Okay. It, it's short. There's no follow through here. It's, it's, it's a shorthand. But we can see that. if Look at these bars. You, it's easy if you see one of them, one set of them, you can see them unfold if you go back and look these are the same things they're just not as pretty both of these runs up are the same as these they're just not as pretty but these are textbook okay I'm just showing you another thing that I see I'll be adding more and more and more and more as we go on month by month by month okay and you should be seeing things probably that I don't see as well. But I'm just going to show I'm just going to show you observations that catch my eye as I'm looking for opportunities. Okay. So I still don't see the opportunity. Do you? Okay. Okay, we come down and break the low and close on the low, but then immediately close on our high, close on our high. So you can see every time that we have an impulse move up, it's rejected. Everything points, and I think we're actually close to making, yep, everything points. Keith says, would pair bars be considered areas of minor failure? Sure. Every time it tries to make a move up, it runs out of gas pretty darn soon and ends up making a new lows, right? So, <clears throat> but these two bars together, you can be blindfolded for this part and know that it's going to work. I mean, just look at them. They, they, just, they just sing to you. And go ahead and take a look at, at uh, the last session, and you'll see the same thing playing out. Can we use this technique regardless of time frame of market? Sure. If you see them, and it's not a technique, it's just a signpost, okay? Don't turn it into a trade, don't turn it into something black and white. It's just something there to help you stay in touch with the action. It's a piece of logic, okay, Manuel? I'm saying, I'm seeing this. Run up, failure, run up, failure, run up, failure. Okay, oh, okay, I get that. So. And it's happening here as well, but it's very obvious right here. So I expect new lows, and we get new lows. And we close on our low. What are the positions? <coughs> okay, people are saying short or flat. But you can see that there were people buying in here and getting crushed and buying in here and getting crushed they're nibbling that's exactly the expression I was going to use and every time they do they get a tooth pulled 
So people don't want to believe that it can go straight down because they just watched it go straight down and then scream up. And remember, this is the same day. This is only two hours later. So they've been to 278, and they've been back to 287, and now they're back to 278. Okay, switch back on possible center. Okay, so let's watch. We're coming up to the red down sloping median line. See it? And we've got our line of maximum excursion. At this point, it's obviously not resistance, but that doesn't mean it can't be a center line. It doesn't mean it can't be a timing line, right? The market is short, flat, or hurt. That's how I would describe it. Sloped pressure, sure. I, th I think there's pressure to make a new low, don't you, Gina? Remember way back when, for those of you that are around, we just did, we were just lining up boxes and watching the market just dribble out of boxes, like, like rolling down the mountainside, finding a flat area, then dribbling on down the mountainside, finding an, right? Well, I understand we're running into the red line, Gina, but how many people have the red line? Almost nobody, right? How many people have the line of maximum excursion? And that's at this point, it's pretty much the people that are in this class. How about that? Out of all the millions of people that trade, at this point, it's basically the people that are in this class. So for those of you that are passing stuff around, you might want to think carefully about what you give away because it's a huge edge and you've earned it you're here doing the work I've given you a huge edge you might want to use it to make money not just to make friends Al says I totally agree no passing things around I mean look you're just giving away your edge I don't think you know it's hard enough to get an edge all right the bottom is at the nexus, or this is not the bottom. Take a look. One, two, we're driving to three. Can you see this? Scotty says, we've all agreed not to share. Good. Well, we have some new people, so we're, we're all, again reinforcing our agreement not to share okay pay attention to this now this is a great piece of logic this is either the bottom coming up or the whole idea of three drives to the bottom three drives to the top is crap and now you're down to one thing which is somewhere in here it's either, that's right, it's either the nexus or it's not the bottom. So somewhere in here, you're expecting to see an opportunity and you're expecting to, you, the risk manager in you needs to make a decision. Is this worth one stop or not? It's as simple as that. One stop is not going to blow up your account. If it is, your stops are too big. Is it worth one stop or not? Okay, so you're anticipating an opportunity, and then when you get to the opportunity, you have to evaluate it and decide whether or not it's worth one stop. But here's how you get there. You're looking at this. You know you've got one on top. You know you've got two on top. You know you've got one on the bottom. You know you've got two on the bottom. You're making lower highs and lower lows. Either the bottom holds on the third drive or it does not. And there's another reason it should hold or have an opportunity to hold. Look at everything coming together. You've got the line of maximum excursion. You've got the red median line. You've got the green median line. You've got everything coming together all in the same area. It's a nexus. And I don't mean Lexus like the car. It's a nexus. This is the area where decisions are made. I don't expect, now pay attention to this. First of all, does everybody see that? Anybody not understand that? 
I don't expect you to trade on the absolute low. Do you all understand that? So we should be considering only Nexus series of trade like this? Um, well, Manuel, I said to you last session, I'm trying to move you to the left, right? Remember that? I'm trying to move you closer and closer to... Al's got it. It's really the logic, not the location. Okay, so Manuel, I'm trying to move you closer and closer to the low, but I don't expect you to trade on the low. Oh, you've not done the video yet? Okay. Well, one reason is because I didn't put it up till last night, so my apologies. But I'm going to, I know you're going to trade over here. If this is the low, I know you're going to trade over here, but I'm going to try and keep pushing you by showing you areas that are closer to the low where you could have traded, okay? I'm thinking of how does the bottom form and where will my opportunity to, co to get in come? Amanda, you're exactly in the right place. And if the bottom doesn't form, Amanda, then you're just going to say, okay, opportunity not there, right? Start over. Okay. So, we're watching it make new lows. The bottom is either at the nexus or it's not. And if it's not, oops. You could throw an order in, but you will not have observed price action. You won't understand the opportunity, and it will just be a guess, which is impulse trading. Does everybody understand that? Okay, Amanda says, sometimes I can see these areas, but I have no confidence that it will probably hold. Okay, well, so, Ma Amanda, this is the third or fourth that I've shown you. Go forth and find other ones, and you will slowly begin... Oh, whoever, well, whoever said that, sorry. Well, that was Manuel, sorry. You, Manuel, same thing, but same message to you, Amanda. Go forth and find other areas like this, not on my charts. <clears throat> They're all over the place. And you will slowly gain confidence. And Matt Cube says, it could also accelerate at the ex at Nexus as well. Yes, Matt Cube, that's why we're not going to trade at the Nexus. Okay. Boom Boom's going to trade at the Nexus. We are going to observe and then think tactically. Are you with me? <coughs> boom Boom trades totally by sound. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes. Boom Boom basically is a pit trader without a pit. Well, he was. God rest his soul. All right. Closing on the low. Well, except for one thing, Peter. Boom Boom was worth about $4 billion when he died. I mean, I, maybe you're rich, but... Yeah, his son is a... Uh, His son is, the, you know, the huge uh, international towers in uh, Thailand. At one point, they were the two largest buildings in the world. That's where that money came from. There's nothing written about him. I'm. You're never going to hear anything about him other than from me. Okay. <laughs> Leave it to the second generation to spend money like that. Actually, no, I'm I'm basically Boom Boom's son's godfather, okay? And guys on the floor don't know who he is, Peter. He was a cash trader. 
there's a statue, those of you who've been around a long time, there's a statue, there's a statue of six people in his office, and they have a tradition of talking to their ancestors, and he considers me to be one of his ancestors. And so he will talk to me by talking to the statue, and then occasionally he'll call me and ask me what, what I think. So he's a, he was raised very well. He's a very well-mannered young man and, and makes a lot of money, and is also uh, has a good heart. Boom Boom was a simple man. He did two things. He traded and smoked. That's all he did. That was his life. He lived to trade. Alright, here we go. No, he does, it's not a voodoo doll. Okay, here we go. So, let's pay attention to price action. So we can see the line of maximum excursion, which often gives us timing. Right? We know we're going 80 miles an hour and now starting to decelerate to 43 miles an hour, right? You should be able to feel, taste, touch, and any other sense you have that the moment of truth is probably somewhere down here. Peter says, I don't see deceleration. Okay. Do you see where it might happen if it's going to happen? That's all I care about. Okay, so Al says this is the 3D low, and it's been tested. Here's our 3D low, meaning on the slope line, that's third dimension, and we're right back at the 3D low. We are making new 2D lows, but we're right back at the 3D low, and Al says, will it hold? Okay, you guys with me? Anybody totally lost in three dimensions? And Amanda says, this is pay attention area, absolutely. If you want to go looking for a trade, this is it doesn't mean you'll make the trade, but this is the area where well they say this about animals. I don't know I don't know if this is you know, I'm I'm getting so old that the people don't say this anymore, but this is where your hackles should be up. Right? Wakey wakey, says Gina. There's no deceleration yet. You're right, Peter. But we do chart work, so we know if it's going, because uh, it may accelerate here. So you may never see deceleration, Peter, in which case the opportunity is gone. But if it doesn't accelerate and it does turn, you'll have marked out the territory where it's likely to happen well before it happens. We marked it out all the way over here, so more than an hour early. When looking at these areas, do you consider the ATR in order to, if price goes through? And if so, is it relevant information? Um, no, Manuel, you will know whether or not price is going to accelerate. <clears throat> I showed you, I'm not going to go back, but I, I will end up squeezing in, but not right now. I showed you before that the upper area that was a possible place to trade. I showed you the lower area that was a possible trade. Do you remember those? those that's where people got hurt in those clumps yes no my well I can hurry no do do you I'm asking you a question do you remember me showing you the clump up there and the clump down here and saying these are where areas to trade or to list, look for trades, look for opportunities. Okay, so we don't need to see the low being made. I mean, we need to be awake, but we'll see that type of action before we trade. We'll, we'll know we're in that fist fight before we jump in. Does that make sense? I'm going to add something extra today, and maybe some lights will go on for some people. Plus, we should know we are at an extreme. There you go, Peter. Well, 
we should know that we're either at an extreme or about to accelerate. And if we see that we're at an extreme and then we get into that back and forth motion, then we should be thinking, what, anybody? Anybody can tell me? If we are at an area which should be an extreme, then we suddenly get two-way action. We start to broaden out. What should we be thinking? Not just range. What, what Pivot forming because of an opportunity because of Come on. Broadening because of what? What's going on? Come on, go back to the basics. We don't use words like distribution. Come on. Not both sides being left. horizontal. Thank you. We reach an extreme and start to broaden out the first thing that should be coming to your mind is, are we going horizontal, right? No? Yes? Okay, so watch this and see if you can see the horizontal. More activity packed into a bar. Now you can see where everything's coming together. We're still testing the 3D low. We are making 2D lows. We're still testing the 3D low. There's no puke. There's no sign yet that anything has changed, right? So you know how they say in the movies, you know, the military guys, wait for it. Wait for it. There's no opportunity yet. You can watch, but there's, there's nothing to do yet other than to wait. Still. These, are, these three bars are like three little pigs. Make a low, close on our high. Ball isn't in the strike zone yet, right. That is a separation bar. Good observation. What will it lead to? We'll see. But we'll mark that. Okay, so we got three little piggy bars down, and then we got suddenly separation, okay? First, higher low, okay? A headstander, sure, okay. Now, oh, crap. Now we close on our low. This is the lowest low for the move. We're at, can you count them? We're at the line of maximum excursion. We're at the red median line. We're at the green median line. Excuse me. And we're making a new low. Okay? This is the nexus or we got quality of bottom problems. Right? It's either going to stop here or it's and okay, Peter, I'm going to take that because I'm, I'm thinking this, but I don't. I want somebody else to say it. Is is it starting to look a little horizontal? Well, it it has just made. Actually, it didn't make a new low. It tested the prior low. I guess I got that wrong. But it's compressing a little bit. But we need it to broaden out or do something, right? Because there's nothing for us to. There's no opportunity here yet right so we've got the first part which is price is in this it's in the zone now it's where it's supposed to slow down the question is is it going to slow down or is it going to accelerate so we're either going to do reverse or accelerate that's what's going to happen here and we might get some coiling action first shouldn't all that energy be making wide range bars um, energy will get spent that's for sure and price making same lows on three dimensions. Okay, the mass has got to shift. Lewis, that's what we're going to be looking for. Lewis, if we're if you're trading in sync with what we've been talking about the last three or four sessions, we're going to let the mass shift and then we're going to trade. You with me? The mass has not shifted yet, right? So Lewis is paying attention. Even if this is the low, the mass has not shifted yet. 
<clears throat> Anybody follow that? All right, let's see if we can spot it. Let's go, let's go wider. All right, here we go. Headstander. You'll know what I mean by mass when I show you, okay? And then I'll let you tell me what you think it is. Strong buyers, I think, is probably a good explanation, but let's see if that's how you interpret it, Manuel, when it shows up, okay? I got a headstander. This, if, if this is the bottom, this is where Boom Boom would be buying, yes. My guess is that mass is looking to get out. If they can't, then energy increases. Um, well, let's watch and see what you see, Peter. So we make a low, close on our high. Okay, this area has been tested, test, taxi tested tough. Now we'll see if it holds. So we need a, we need a couple things here. If this is an opportunity, this needs to be the bottom. That's the first and most important thing. It's right in the swing zone. It's right. If it stops, it's stopping right where it's supposed to stop. Okay, we've got it all mapped out. The question is, will it? Is our map worth, you know, more than two cents? We can only find out by price. We also want some people to get caught here, right? Okay. The first question is, what are the positions right now? Okay, short or out. So that's good, right? Which could f fuel a movement that we're willing to play. Also, price has been moving down in a sustainable fashion. It's moving down and pausing, moving down and pausing. Now it's even decelerating. So it shouldn't be out of energy. How about that bar? Now, it could be one of these. Don't 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 kid yourself. It could be this, right? We have seen this before. Correct? Headstander, follow through. So I don't know I'm home free yet. But I do know this. Every time it's done headstand or follow through, it's made a new low. Do you see that? Let me say it again. Every time it's done this, where it's pulled up and found then follow through, it's made a new low. I don't, okay. Matt Cube says hasn't broken any tops or highs. I don't give a rat so you don't want about that. That's trend talk. If you want to, I'll show you what that confirmation will. Matt, thank you for playing in my hands. I'm going to show you what that confirmation is going to cause you. You don't get to trade until it's broken major tops, okay? So I'll show you where you're trading today. <coughs> Where's the tell? Well, we don't have a tell yet, do we? Right, Gina? Right now, we, we've seen this game before. If we see paired bars with close of second bar at high, is that confirmation of the change? Um, we need something that doesn't look like this. Is the is the only way I can describe it, Bob? Right now, it, it looks like this, doesn't it? I don't know what I'm looking for, but I'll know it when I see it. I, somebody famous once said that. Probably Mark Twain or somebody. What we want is something that doesn't look like this, okay? And I'm going to give you this. You want me to give you the specific key? Forget the paired bar, Al. Forget that. It's just a a visual for over here. <coughs> That's the definition of porn according to one judge. Thank you very much, Gina. I think we've already had that. We had a high four bars back, okay? Signpost. In, in compressed action. Okay, here you go. I'm going to give you the key. Bob, you ready? I'm going to give it just to you. Nobody else. Are you ready? 
<clears throat> so nobody else pay, pay attention, just Bob. If we get this action, and we're at our third drive to the bottom, and we're at the median line and the median line and the line of maximum excursion, and we see the mass shift, we'll see a rise up. The truth is, we can never be sure, but if this is going to work, if this is the nexus and we're going to turn higher, just you and I, Bob, nobody else, are going to expect a higher low. You follow me, Bob? Just you and me. Well, no, Robbie, you're not allowed to listen. But yeah, I will say it again. If this nexus is going to hold, Bob and I are going to see price come up, just as it did over here. The difference is we're going to see price come up. We're going to see the mass shift, so it's going to broaden. And then when it comes down, it will leave a higher low. And that's where Bob and I are going to put our money on the table. We're going to put our one stop on the table. Not Matt Cubed. He's waiting for confirmation. But Bob and I... Okay? You with me, Bob? So let's see if we can spot it. We may take our stop out and then go, okay, that's not it. Put it away. But Bob and I have our stop out. Here we go. Okay, headstander, follow through, another headstander. Even that's not enough for me. So Macy paired bars a turn to the small pullback. Don't get so caught on the paired bars thing, but okay. But if spawns a higher low, then this will be a heads up for an entry. Not for you and I, Bob. You and I are going to anticipate the higher low. Think about what we've done the last three sessions. That's called stepping in the bucket. We're going to anticipate that higher low and we're going to use it. Okay? Boom Boom's long already. You and I are looking for the next best entry, which I think is the only teachable entry. And nine out of ten times, I'm not buying this low either. Is that the C pivot for the light blue? Um... Um, I'll tell you in a second. Thanks for asking. I know you're here. Could be. Tis. So there's our up sloping median line. So Bob, here's our here's our second visual. Hang on, I can tell. Be boom boom got long right here, Peter. Oh yeah. Okay, so. Bob, you've got a visual. Yes, yeah, so now I've got a new energy point. But, Bob, I've got a new visual aid for you. See it? If we're right, Bob and I have two things going for us. We've got an upsloping line, and we've got a nexus area, and price shouldn't make a new low. You with me, Bob? Here we go. Got a head stander. Got our up sloper. Thank you for reminding me. I got another head slope. Another hand, head stander. So let's look. 
it's the most vertical move it's also we've got our nexus and our upsloping line it feels like it it smells like it anybody that's short is definitely in trouble right Amanda says the changes come for me Aaron says this is definitely different would you say this is different price action now a change of behavior let me ask you Robbie would you say that higher low with follow through me too says John okay but we need to pull back to a higher low says Keith ding 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 that's what Bob and I are looking for you want to join us Keith the tell here you often mention head standards are they that important oh, they're just an ad, it's just it, it's look I gotta have them I gotta have them that's all it, it's people chasing people have got to they've got to buy now the only action is not to get caught up in emotion and chase and just like you said that what, what was the correct opportunity so what is the correct opportunity Bob and I already said would you freshen up the frequency no not yet there's no frequency yet. Not nibbling anymore. They're they're kind they're excited. Okay. So some shorts are forced to cover. How about high of second bar from low? Retest that high, second bar from low. Okay. Well, that's fine. And I've got several people who want to get long at 277 and a half, 278. Okay, don't don't get in front of yourself yet. Hang on. There's probably more. You have to bring in the go no go and see where to forge your area to get in. That's right, Timmy. There, there's work to be done here, folks. Don't impulse trade. I know we we think we have the opportunity nailed, but don't impulse trade because we, maybe we don't. What happens if the next bar is here? So let's see what happens. Yeah, screwed. Okay, so we blow through the line of maximum excursion. Crap. Bob, have we missed it? Bob says that's good. Now we need a retracement. Have we missed it, Bob? Amanda says we want this. Okay. Have we missed it? What's happening? Anybody? What's happening? We are we are showing a change in direction. Okay. A lot of people, there you go. A lot of people are chasing and the sellers are jumping out. And the breakout buyers are buying. The buyers got to have it. What's the what's the position now? People that were short have gotten out of their shorts, and people that are impulse trading are long, right? Isn't that a perfect opportunity for us for a higher low? When all these people get shagged out, all these people that went long, everybody that traded too early, how many of you have gotten caught trading too early? How many people said to me when this bar printed, okay, I'd buy at 278? If you trade too early, you can be right and lose money, right? or miss the opportunity because you want to break even etc okay so slow down when the market speeds up slow down one thing that I've been watching is that these will be early entries and so we should not move the stop loss too quickly to break even is this correct well man well that's why you don't want to trade early because break even is can be very costly here where would the horizontal traders have gotten in long Okay, lots of people are buying, getting out, buying, getting out, 
buying, getting out, and going short. Lots of people are short right here. Okay, see it? Do you see that, Keith? Okay, now people are piling on. Now they got some money in the trade, and they're re recovering some of the money that they lost in this chop. And all of a sudden, it turns on a dime, and they start to eat their young. Look at them. Chase it. And they decide to go long. Oh, hell. You know what? This thing is going back up. So whatever money's left in the trade, they get out, and then they impulse long, and that's this stuff up here, the fluff. That's what pushes it to an extreme, right? You with me? Okay, now I left these BC lines in because I didn't want to forget to draw the median lines, okay? They're too important, and I you've seen that I've, I've drawn a little bit late. They need to be drawn at the right time, so I just left them in for you. My apologies if that's distracting. <coughs> okay, Gina, this is really important. So, Gina, listen to what Gina says. This is where I feel like I missed the bus. That's why this trade is so good. Because your emotions tell you that you missed it. And so you give up. You don't want to be long for this leg. Or if you are, you need to stay with your original stop. Because this is the nexus. This is either it or it's not. So spend the stop. Follow me? This is where you know you're in tune with the market now that you wait for your opportunity to get long. Yeah, if you trade too soon, you've got to leave your stop down here. But if you wait and slow down and let the market come to you, that's what Bob and I and Keith are going to do. We're going to slow down. The market's speeding up. We're going to slow down and let these people hurt themselves. Okay, are you ready? And then I want you to think about after we finish today, I want you to think about the prior three sessions. It's the same trade. I'm just showing you more. Okay, I'm being even more surgical. Okay, we come up and we test a prior high, which is not really that important to me, but the key, I think, is that we've gone vertical and then we close on our low. Okay, my eyebrows immediately go up because Bob and I and Keith are looking for these people to get hurt, take their losses, and there's only one thing that I ask for, God, what is that? A higher low, thank you. I want to pull back and I want a higher low. That's all I want. Can anybody tell you, okay, I pull back with a stop. Sorry, right, Gina, how can I plan that? You can put the order in right now. How? Okay, where would I put my go-no-go? -no -go? Three ticks below here, anything above, right? Three ticks below low. That's it. Just lay it out there so you can visualize it. Okay, and then watch. It's either going to come back and be an opportunity or it's not. Are you with me? If we want to buy down below, shouldn't we wait for a swing high to get broken? Well, okay, Manuel, you just got to trade with Matt Cubed. You don't get to trade until swing highs get taken out. But I'll show you that trade too, and then you'll get to see how much that cost you. Doesn't mean that you can't do that. It just means I'm going to try and push you into trading like this. That I'm using my hands. I'm going to try and get you to trade over here instead of trading up here. Doesn't mean there's not money to be made up here. When we feel like we miss it, I know the ball is coming and be prepared to step into the bucket. There you go, Lois. So watch. Okay. Again, this is coming later, but do you see it? Gina says, I finally understand why that surge off the bottom is so deadly for me. Yeah, because you get trapped in the impulse rating, don't you, Gina? It's so alluring. 
Okay. Look at the bar. See it? It's a bar only a mother could love. Anything that gives us a stop. Right? Make sense? You can use a cent and a half. You can use a cent, whatever you want. Shorts think trend resumption. Um, this is more, I got long here, and I'm going to take another loss. No way, I'm out. That's what this is. That bar. Now, that bar can also spawn people to decide that the shorts are coming, or... You can also decide, get people to decide, you know what, I've had enough, this looks, I'm tired of getting chewed out, and they just run away, All right? So see if you can follow price action here now. I just grabbed a center line that sliced through that price action, kind of a balance line. Can you see that? This is, on a scale of 1 to 5, this is probably a two in terms of your ability to draw it, okay? Don't get freaked out if you can't draw this. And if you look, I looked back after I drew it and went, you know, it pretty well fits with these closes and opens, so I, I like this. I like the way it cuts the reaction. If you can't draw it, don't get freaked out. The, it, the trade does not stand on that bar, okay? It's a balance line, nothing more, okay? Now, this is the shift in mass right here. See that? This was drawn by I, yes. Now watch this. If Bob and I and Keith are right, are we decelerating, accelerating, what are we doing? Well, I'm going to add what John and Keith said together, and that should give you the answer. Accelerating up, decelerating down, we're doing both. What does that mean? Nexus and pausing. Pausing is a good word, and what does that infer, Robbie? Pausing is the right word. Well, keep going. Energy coil, consolidate. Horizontal, thank you. And if we get we're at horizontal... See if this helps some of you for a visual. You ready? There's your horizontal. And here's the center right here. Here's the center mass right here. See it? And here's the shift. We paused. We're shifting right now. You see the shift coming? So we should be going from tangents that are downsloping, see that one, to tangents that are basically flat, to tangents that eventually will start to move up. Do you see it? I'm not talking about any particular bar. I'm talking about the overall price action. If this is a transition area, you should, we are still going down, you can see that, but then we should flatten out and then we should start to accelerate. Do you see that? This is the center, the mass, and this is the mass shifting right here. How do I draw a circle? Uh, it's this tool right here. I just cheated and had it ready. Okay, are we good? It's going to get messy, so I'm going to take these lines off. You can always look at them in the recording. 
I got a lot of visual aids for you here. Okay. If I need to put this one up, I'll put it back up for you. But right now, let's leave it off. Okay. So everybody understands we're the mass is shifting, and we're about to see the tangents go from downsloping to horizontal to upsloping. Does everybody understand that? Can we go forward? Okay. Sliding down this line, and you can see at this point I'm pretty happy with this line, right? Um, so you may only see signs of horizontal on top. No, I, 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 I'm not showing you. That circle didn't mean to show you that the top was horizontal. That circle was meant to show you the area of mass shifting. That's all. Okay. That circle. There's, there's no. There's no support or resistance on that circle. Okay, it's just to show you the area of the mass shifting, the tangents moving, the slope shifting. Okay, so we come along this line. We got the creepy crawly thing going. That's right. Okay. Okay. Then we get a headstander. One bar. Now, if you're over eager. And you try and trade in here. What's the problem? Again, I want to chase, says Gina. That's the problem, isn't it? And you have no stop. So here, Gina. I'm I'm going to break you that habit one way or the other. So here you go. I don't know if this will work, but hopefully this will. I'm just guessing. Embrace your problems. Here's Gina tracing, chasing rather, okay? Oh my God, it starts to go up. I got to get long. So Gina gets long right here, okay? Because she's afraid, Perry says, afraid of missing the trade. Yeah. The character I'm playing says nothing has been taken out yet. Not that I agree with that at this point, but I must play my part. No, Matt, nothing has been taken out. You and Manuel, nothing's been taken out. I agree. I'm telling you it doesn't matter. And I, I will eventually get you to move to the dark side, okay? Manuel says, if so if you, Tim, are teaching us to enter early, how can we deal with the possibility of a last photon? Okay, that comes from reading price action and using correct volatility, okay? Yu King says, if it comes back, you're going to get stopped and price is going to turn. So that's going to be Gina's problem. Gina's in, and she's in early, and if price does come down, aloha, because she traded too early. Manuel, same thing here, right? And sometimes there's no trade. Jorge's right, exactly right. Sometimes, guess what? That was the low, and you never got in. Okay, here we go. One bar up, head standard down. See it? I will be right on direction and wrong on the trade. I've seen this show before, says Gina. Yep, absolutely. You trade too early, that's what you get. Looks like we are sliding down the line of maximum excursion toward the energy point, light blue, lower parallel, and the down sloping LME. Okay. Here we go. Now we've got a pink median line. And this is a timing meeting line. It's just to help us pay attention. Okay. This set looks like paired. Yeah, these are paired bars as well. Yep. These are paired bars as well. They're just sloppy, but yeah. Okay. All right. Bob, you got your pencil sharpened? This is Gina, not us. Gina, do you see where we're going to get stopped out? Do you see the price we're trading too early? Uh, boom Boom's long and willing to buy more. In the Asian market, Peter, 
Boom Boom made the highs and the lows. Gina says, I can feel it. I'm going to get chopped up in the reversal. Okay. I like the entry at the median line, but I have trouble with absolute trust in my line still. Well, Bob, there's, a time, there's going to come a time where you're going to have to trust yourself. Period. If you want to move forward, there's a time where you're going to have to trust your work. Okay? I know you're getting there. Hold hands with me because you and I are going to make this trade. Okay? No. Enough with boom boom. You can ask later. Let's pay attention to this. I can't teach you boom boom. Okay? I cannot. I will not. That's talent. <coughs> there's lots of things that I do that are talent. I can't teach you those. So let's pay attention to what I can teach you because you know what? You'll be rich if you learn these. You don't need talent. You don't need to be Boom Boom. You don't need to be Bill Shepard. And you don't need to be me. You need to be you. So learn what I can teach you. Gina's stop loss is right here. And Gina's stop loss is the same as the maximum Bob that you and I are willing to pay. See it? Because she got in early chasing an up move. Afraid to miss the trade. Okay? We're not. Okay. Closes on its low. Bob, don't get don't get spooked. It's okay. It's okay. And you don't have to trade. You don't have to put your order in yet if you don't want to. Okay? With me? Well, you can we we can have our orders in right now if we want. This is a point and a half. We don't even need a point and a half. And Bob says this is where it's only one stop comes in. That's right. But Bob, if you don't want to have your order in yet, you don't have to yet. Okay. But we only need about one point two. Bob says, I like the media line. Okay, so we're going to just run it on the media line. That's fine. We're at the median line. Maybe we got filled, maybe we didn't, but Gina's definitely stopped out. Because that's just the way brokers are. <coughs> We've got this nice little pink down sloping median line. It's kind of a guide. We're at the nexus of these two. Okay. Bob, if you didn't think we were filled before, we're, no. Bob, Bob agreed that he liked the median lines. So our orders are in now. Keith, do you want your orders in now or not? Because we expect this is either a loser or a higher low. I don't want to say, I don't mean this literally, but it's all in now. It's either, it's either a winner or a loser. It's nothing in between. There's nothing to finesse here. Do you follow me? Everybody get that? It's either it's a it's binary. It's either yes or no. So at some point, just put your order in. It's the moment of truth. Okay, I'll take that. Hi Carlos, how you doing? <coughs> okay, so test of the median line with separation. You know, if you want to test and retest, there's your separation, right? So, if you're still trying to trade a little bit to the right, and you need something like test and retest, okay, you got it. There's your test with separation by the retest. Okay, you're long at the median line, okay? Does the light blue median line need to be tested before it's used? Um, in this sense, it doesn't because... That's not the premise of this, this trade. The premise of this trade is this is either going to be a high or low or we're going to just be stopped out. But if you want to trade with median lines and lines of maximum excursion, they do lead you right to the area to trade, don't they? Oh, the blue median line. Um, all right, hang on. One, one, two, two, possible three. We don't know, but we expect there's going to be a three up here. This one's either going to hold or it's not going to hold. 
okay we anchored the blue at the two and the two which means if we're right it's at the actual three does that make sense two connected to two projects to the next area which is the three does that make sense And by the way, it's a force pivot. It's on the lower green parallel. Robbie says, yes, it's so logical of it. You see, see it nesting right on the lower green parallel? And if that's not enough for you, we've got our line of maximum excursion that gives us the absolute low to the tick. Okay, It's an odd crystalline structure, yeah. Everybody got it so I can widen out? Okay. Okay, now. You can wait for the test and retest. You can have your order in and be filled. It's the same trade. It's really just a matter of confidence at this point. It's important that you don't chase. If you get in too early, you will get stopped out. Our stop has to be, for this early entry, our stop has to be underneath C. Can you see this? That means if this is the low and it goes up, we are going to miss it. And that's just the way it is. But if we trade here, there's a fairly good chance that we're going to get stopped out for trading too early. What would be the earliest this order could be entered? You can order you can do this right here. If you if you actually think 1 2 3 connect the twos, project a 3, I've got the green median line. As soon as you get these separation bars, you can start putting this order in. It you may never come into play, Aaron, but right? You you can just put it in immediately. And in fact, I think Jorge, I think when this bar printed, Jorge said to me, okay, I'm a buyer at 278. Is that correct, Jorge? <coughs> he didn't wait for the run up. But, he says yes, but you can see the mass shift here. Everybody gets long, now everybody's getting sh shaken out, right? This is how they, we get to our entry, by everybody getting long, and then getting shaken out. I want the book clean. I don't want people to be long. If it goes up, I want them to have to chase me. Does that make sense? And I don't mean, I'm not playing this as a whale. Right now the fund is not active. They have open positions, but we're not taking new positions. So this is just my personal account. So I want to get in when everybody else is frustrated. And losing money but I'm not going to push the market it would be if I was a whale of course I would but it's not what's going to happen here okay you had potentially filled on this bar certainly filled on this bar certainly filled on this bar okay note the close Now we've got a new median line. There for a visual aid and also potential second secondary trades. Okay? Now remember, we've got a handful of people. They have to they have to break out. They have to take out a high or they can't trade. They must have confirmation or they can't trade. If they don't have confirmation, they can't trade. This is a modified shift anchored at the low because we went vertical here. Okay. Let me say it again. There's a handful of people here that admitted that they were looking for a top to be taken out. This is how the market thinks. People get long up here. People get short down here. You 
follow me? No, Amanda, this is not enough for them. They need this top to get taken out. They need this bottom to get taken out. Okay. When their confirmation comes, Amanda says, this bar confirms my thinking. Okay, now i got to hang on. Hang on to that thought, Amanda, because I'm going to come back to you in a second. When their confirmation up here, when we take out this high for long, we're going to be going to break even, right? Because if they start, if it gets to the point where they have to start puking to the downside, they're probably going to push us to our stop losses as well. This is definitely different than mid days two, three years ago. I can feel you pushing up to step up our game. Absolutely, Timmy. I'm teaching you stuff. This is how I, I trade. Okay? And if you're here all the time, I expect I can bring you up to speed. Okay. Gina says, I'm starting to understand the dynamics of a turn. Good. So, here's Gina trading early. I'll beat that out of her. Okay? Matt Cubed and Manuel and some other people... They have to have their confirmation up here before they get long. I'll beat that out of you as well. Okay? Amanda says, okay, when this bar finishes, I've got my confirmation. Correct, Amanda? I don't want to misspeak. Okay, so Amanda's not long yet. Bob and me and Keith were long. And yes, this is a great signpost. So if you don't get this, it's okay. I'm Amanda, I'm going to try and push you this way, okay? Doesn't mean I'm going to be able to, but I'm going to try and force you into this thinking over here. Okay? With me? But that doesn't mean there's not a nice trade for you. Okay, target. I'm going to stick with the same thing. We're going to use dead Greek material. Range. Yep, I guess I'm going to have to squeeze in again. Range. See the top of the range? Double the range. with me? Yeah, that'll give us a hell of a risk reward, won't it? I expect this pattern of lower highs. If I expect this three to hold, all right, let's go through the let's go through the thought process. This is one, two, three drives to the bottom. Are you with me? This is one, two, we're coming up on the third drive to the top, right? One of these is not going to hold. And these are big, wide one, two, threes, right? If this top gets broken, if this three gets broken and this three holds, I don't expect, okay, I'll see you later. I don't expect a small move. I expect double the range. Minimum. Because days of repeatable behavior just got blown up. That makes sense? All things are now new. Okay, so now you know what the target is. Minimum target. Okay. <coughs> Amanda's got her tell. Let's see what that leads to. Okay. And you can do a mini one, two, three, okay, if you want, if that helps you. In which case, here's the first drive to the low, here's the second drive to the low. Everybody see that? Again, one of these is not going to hold. And I know it's getting a little crowded in here in terms of drawing, but I'm sorry. Just trying to see if you can see if you can see through it. 
Okay, we're testing the top of our downsloping pink, magenta, whatever median line. Whoa! How are you feeling, Amanda? You got your confirmation. How are you feeling? Amanda says I missed it. Okay. Are you giving up? Let me ask you a question. Can you envision can you envision an opportunity that would allow you to get long? If you haven't traded at this point, folks, and you were chasing this and you were unable to step into the box here, like I did, like Bob did, and you didn't do what Gina did, so you're not out of emotional capital, can you imagine an opportunity that allows you to trade? And that secondary entry, I want you to see if you can visualize that secondary entry, okay? Okay. You want to be at the this lower parallel? <coughs> if the stop works. Okay. All right. So try and visualize it, folks. New high. I, I know it hurts. Okay, we've tested the upsloping blue median line. Do you see it? Tim, how do I get my thinking to change when I see your one, two, three with lower highs? I would have been one of those shorts and probably spent to get long. Well, okay, you think tactically. You need to see more of these, Peter, before I can change you, but I will get you to be thinking tactically. You're thinking with the sheep. We're the wolf. Okay? We'll get you there. Don't worry. That's why we do repetition. All right. So we're up here. Everybody pay attention. This dark blue median line just got tested. See it? So it's in play as well. The light blue that Bob and I used is in play, and the dark blue is in play. They're, they're all in play. Okay. And I've got various nexus points, potential energy points here. This is that hand-drawn balance line that I put in. I just added it to the top and then doubled the range, and it gave me the top here. Do you see that? At least for the moment. I can see the lower median line, the backside of a hand-drawn balance line. Okay, good. So maybe here. Okay, so your, your chart probably will look different. You probably will not have drawn all the things that I have in here. Some of them are for illustration. Some of the lines, like this one, this balance line, you might not be able to draw. That's okay because you know what? There's five different ways into this entry, and there's five different ways into the next entry. Okay, take care, Mama. You willing to take this one, Amanda? Amanda says no. Is that dotted line between two and three a median line that needs to be revealed? Nope, this is coming later. In fact, it's coming right here. I connected this low. See this close on its high? Let me, let me give you one more bar. I connected this low with this low. Do you got it? I projected it forward. Now I'm just going to put it up. You'll see why here you'll see why I connected it where I did just based on price action it's coming up in a minute 
So now I've got a line of maximum excursion on the bottom. Okay? No love at this area. No love here. Secondary entries not happening for us. Not yet. The stop would not have worked. That's right. Well, we you would have had to go on to three cents to make it work. Okay. Now we're at the median, the green median line. How many people think this trades up? That there's no no possibility of getting in yet. Again. Matt says I agree with that. Looking at all the work you do, do on one chart, it's a wonder you ever have get out of the cave. Either that or at this point you draw real fast and this stuff just flies off your mouse. But stuff does fly off my mouse, Timmy. Amanda says I need a good pullback. Okay. It definitely could happen. Never give up on these trades. Okay, Matt cubed. Jorge says, I must admit I would have been right at the nexus bottom, but I would have taken my 25, 30 cents. I'm unable to hold my water. Okay, well, you're going to have to start believing in the minimum swing is 7 or 8 cents, Jorge, because it's there for you. The risk reward of taking 2.5 or 3 cents, just doesn't, it just doesn't make sense. Okay, and we're hunting for bigger fish here. So, after you watch another of uh, enough of them, you will get to the point where you start to lengthen out your profits. But the good news is, Jorge, you were right there looking in the right place early. Okay? So I can teach you to lengthen your profit target. It's harder for me to get you closer and closer to the edge, and you're already over there. So, you know, don't give up. We're, we're all good. I can get you there, okay? All right. So now we're up here. There's your confirmation, Matt. Feeling better, buddy? Everybody that wanted upside confirmation, okay, now we've taken out highs. Feeling better, Matt? Come on. Feeling so bad I wouldn't be tradable at this point. Okay. Well, that's right, because you're going to trade anyway. Uh, who else did I put in there? I put somebody else in that group. If I'll be honest. All right. So let's see what happens. Anybody know what this is? This is all bittersweet. I'm trying so freaking hard and I had a terrible month. I see what you're doing. Something is missing. Sometimes I think it's my brain. No, you just need one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Well, you need to get in the step. That's all. Harmonic coil is exactly what it is, Ouija. That's right, Keith. Same thing. Okay, we're in a harmonic coil. Test the top. If there's going to be a secondary entry, I mean, every time we think there is one, it didn't happen, but we're going to need a nice, fat pullback, right? Mandy, you still there? The last piece of structure on here, can anybody tell me what it is? There's several answers, but they're all in the same area. Anybody? Structure that will help you. How about that? <coughs> yes, but why? We, we, can you name it? The red upper parallel or the green median line? Okay, the green median line. No, I don't care. This is not going to help you up here. You're, you're trying to get long at a pullback. Gina, you're trying to get back into the game. Matt and friends had to have confirmation. Now they're hoping, right? Deep blue, isn't it? That That's the guy from Watergate, isn't it? Anyway, it's this area in here. This is a balance line right here. 
this is the green median line. It is down sloping. It's something I don't like about it. But it's this area right here. This is also the top of the range. So the only chance you have to get long is if we can find a stop around the top of what was the range, right? Follow me? Now, you may think we're asking for a lot, but okay, it just cracked our harmonic coil. Up to low, pull back in, boxed in, connect the high, connect the high, move it over, okay? Flip it to the bottom. New harmonic coil. See it? Market's talking to you if you just listen. Tries to make a new high, doesn't. Testing the bottom of the coil. Can't make it to the top. Finally does slide to the top. I need to think about quality of the stop. Okay. Not time to trade, but yet, but okay. In essence, this is actually a rolling chop as well as a harmonic coil. There's lots of people getting chopped out on this one. Uh oh. I guess I'll, I need to give you a little more price action. Okay. Top of the prior coil. Yeah, I need to be zoomed in some more just so you can read this stuff. Top of the harmon top of the coil. Last chance. We'll pro price pull back to test the old top of the critical range. All right. So what do you do? You got to put in your go-no-go. -no -go. And where's your stop? You can't afford to trade at the green line. Unfortunately, you can't afford to trade at the upsloping blue line. Unfortunately can't. Where's your stop? It's got to be underneath the swing. You with me? It's got to be underneath this swing. So it's got to be three ticks underneath that swing. See it? Why not under the higher swing? Oh god. Okay, we we'll asked that. Aaron, ready? Do, 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 do. Here's the next swing right here. And tell me when you know what this is. You may know what that is? Aaron, do you know what that is? I'll keep drawing until you can tell me what it is. It's a mountain. Okay, so you don't understand how they accept it. Okay, I'll, I'll show you. Okay, here's the deal. This is all one structure. This low and this low come together to form what's called a mountain. Crayon drawing, okay? You can't put your stop underneath this because it's the same structure as this. They are twins. They're connected. Your stop has to be underneath the structure below this. Yes? No? Okay. Anybody else have questions on that? Okay. So, our stop can't be underneath here because it's double bottoms. Our stop has to be underneath this structure. So, but don't give up. I know it sucks. I get your theory going, you have to see more to identify them. Yep, that's right, Peter. I have to go, all right. I know I know we're going slow, Gina, but there's a lot to take in. All right, just watch the replay. I'll see you later. Take care, sweetie. All right, so now watch. I know it sucks because you want to get long on the median line. 
I know it sucks because you wanted to get long on the green median line, okay? But take a look at our harmonic coil. Can you see it? You see the bottom? Everybody see it? Yes, no? Look at the slop. Do you see it? Okay, so we need to be observant. This thing is sloppy. As people get stopped out, people chased and got long. Now they're in a rolling chop. And as it comes down here, they're getting chopped, right? The coil is one, two, three, and one, two, three in the bottom as well. Yes, it is. Okay, now, as it comes down here, it's sloppy because people are getting their you-know-what handed to them. So draw out that sliding parallel and hope for puke time. Right, Jorge? You gotta, if you're not long now, you better hope that it is sloppy because you can't afford to be up here. Okay, so let's see what happens. Still not filled. Okay, that's all right. Just be patient. I know you got to hope for a... That's exactly right, Bob. If you're not long, you got to hope for a photon down. That's right. All right. Trying to break out of the coil. If it breaks out of the coil, we're done. If and that, By breaking out, it would have to take out this eye. Okay. Double tops. Turning down. Don't give up. So leave that go, no, go in. Put your order in. Your stops underneath the swing. Just be patient. You've got your sliding parallel going. Here, I'll make it a, f a fancy color so you can see it better. Just as the market speeds up, you slow down. Just wait. Be patient. Sit in the weeds. It's either going to fill you or it's not. But the, la the worst thing you can do, ask Gina from the earlier trade, the worst thing you can do is chase the damn thing. Back at the top, you're like, oh, God, this is not gonna, it's not happening to you. Are you kidding me? But look at the close. See it? Sure, you could do undershoot on the blue median line as well. I didn't go back and drop, but you can go back and take a look if you want. But look, and there's sellers up here. See it? There are sellers up here. Look at this close. All right. If you don't have the cojones to leave your order in, you would have been filled here. If you don't have the cojones to leave your order in, all right, what if I gave you a test and retest? So you see this bar, and it closes with separation. This is not going to happen as often as this last photon down. Came right down to the sliding parallel. Do you see that? But even if you see the close and then go, oh crap, I should have had my order in. I can afford this stop. Put the order in. Every once in a while, you'll get filled. Like that. So there's a test retest that gets filled. Do you think you're going to get filled with any reasonable stop after seeing this bar? This is why you need to have your orders in the market at the areas that you want to trade that you can afford the stop before the market unfolds. I can't emphasize this enough. You need to have your limit entries in and your stops in the market at the place you're willing to trade with the appropriate stop and let yourself get filled. Stop watching the market and saying, okay, I'm going to see this before I put my order in. Because if you wait for this close, you ain't going to get filled. And you're definitely not going to get filled now, are you? If it comes down here now, do you want to get long? How many bars in advance do you think we should be placing orders? 
I Matt Cubed, I I the moment you recognize that this is your last chance to get long, I mean I'd have it here at this blue parallel thinking maybe I can get filled at the blue parallel. And then once you can't afford it, then you just have to leave it down here. When you see this poke below, put the sliding parallel out and then just start sliding them out there. It's not a, I can't give you a formula, but when you understand and can visualize where the potential trade is, if the order and the stop makes sense, put them in the market. Always, always, always have your stop in place, okay? All right, let's see how this unfolds. At the green median line, well, actually, it's the upper parallel. Past the green parallel. I mean, closing on the high, closing on the high, closing on the high. Okay, three just got broken. See it? We should be in for double the range now. And this should be quick and easy. Because that's how it went down. I mean, it went down vertically, remember? Now that we're on our way, it should go up vertically. Blue parallel. Zoom the blue parallel. No retest of the blue parallel. I got my order in, okay? If we hit the blue parallel, I'll take my money. It's within a cent or so of double the range. So if we get to the blue upper parallel right now, I'll take my money. Visiting Lima now, I have to be, okay, take care Jorge, enjoy. So close, but not filled, that's okay. But my orders, you asked, you asked early about my orders, my orders are just sitting there. If it hits the upper parallel, I'll take my money. You see it? Robbie? They're just in the market. I know where I'm willing to trade, so why wait? I'm not going to see the price print and then say, oh, you know what? I'd like to get out here. I'm going to have my orders in the market. Period. Missed me by the slimmest of margins. That's okay. I'll keep working the order. Because remember, the longer I'm in this trade without getting profit stopped out, the more money I'm going to make because they're up sloping lines. Make sense? High activity bars. Just small air. And they are trying to sell it. Look at them try and try and try and try. And it's holding. Higher lows, higher highs. This is double the range right here. Do you see it? I'll take either one now, either the blue or double the range. I don't care. With me? We're out, Bob. Two ninety six and a half. So long at two seventy eight out at 296 and a half. Did we get out the absolute high? No, and don't care. Yeah, you could, yeah, of course we would have moved our trailing stop, and you guys should be able to do that. Underneath here, underneath here, there's no more, nowhere to move it after that. At some point, Bob and I got to move under here, but you guys were trying to entry, enter, right? Make sense? I'll show you the trade again.
Okay. So, original entry. Almost eighteen hundred dollars. Secondary entry. It's still not bad. It's sixteen hundred dollars. Either one works. There's a lot of lines in here. Some of them you'll be able to draw. Some of them just won't be your style. Don't worry about that. Did which opportunity come first dictate which side you traded to the third drive from? Um, Ouija, okay. Here's the logic. I've got a two, I've got a two. I'm expecting a three down here or I'm expect well I, I'm expecting a three down here and then it will hold or break. Does that make sense, Ouija? Okay. As price comes down here and then does this little dance where it shifts mass right there. Right here. I'm willing to put one stop on the line. And by the time we get up to where three is going to form, take a look. We're getting along at uh, in this area, 278. We've already got seven eight cents in here. Okay. We're going to be at least a break even, if not better, right? And then buy a lot of ticket for the upper three to get broken and flower. Exactly right, Ouija. So I'll be at break even or better, and then the decision will come when we get to three. If three doesn't get taken out, we'll be back down here, but I'll be at either break even or better. If three does get broken, this thing ought to just take off like a rocket, right? Once you're in your trade, Tim, is it fair to say you draw less? Um, there's less to do, Amanda, yeah. The, here's the problem with overdrawing once you're in the trade, is that it can lead you to overmanage the trade. You, you get lured into, you know, maybe I ought to do this. Well, you know, maybe I ought to change the, so I just try and concentrate on the major swings. Amanda says I'm finding this out. So try and just try and concentrate. Remember, looking for a top, looking for a bottom, then if you find the bottom, when the top gets taken out, then you can move your stop. That's really all, you, once you're in the trade, that's really all you're interested in. You've already got your profit target, right? So just fall back on trying to do the big boxes and forget about all the other stuff unless the character of the market changes, then you can refresh frequency, but don't try don't overdraw because it will it'll draw you into that's the wrong word. It'll it'll um no, I guess Shane uses this word. Elicit. you feel like you should be doing more. Let me just draw this median line. Let me just add this thing, right? It'll suck you into a, exiting a trade. Sure, yeah, that's absolutely true. And it'll rattle you, scare you out of the trade prematurely. Absolutely true. So try and draw just what you need and try and stay with the trade plan. This is why it's important, as far as I'm concerned, to draw, to actually hand write out a trade plan because it's right in front of you. And that act of drawing is almost like commitment then you can look at the trade plan and go, I, you know what? I don't need that median line. I know where I'm going. I got it. Okay? So, yeah, don't overdraw. All right. Any questions on this trade? I know there's a lot of lines on this one, but let me add in one last thing here for you as we head out. And can you see it there? Can you see it going horizontal? Matt Cube says, this is perfect where my learning curve is right now. Thanks for putting this great lesson together. Okay, good. I get when you find the right trade, how everything seems to fall into place. What kind of radar 
do you have to watch so many markets? Well, Peter, here's the thing. I only watch four or five markets total, okay? And what I'll do is, I get up at three. What I do is, I'll just look through the markets. If there's nothing going on, I have other stuff to do. Then I'll come back after a little while and page through and see if there's anything. If there's nothing setting up, I don't bother. If one of them is setting up, that's the only chart I watch for the day. That's all. Can this trade concept be drawn out with simple lines? Sure. You don't need 80% of these lines, Aaron. Absolutely. Robbie, when you were drawing earlier, I could see an expanding pivot pattern from the red pivots, but the way you zoom in focuses out so it keeps you focuses in on the main action and doesn't let you lose your focus by the expanding pivots. Yeah, I try. And I don't like expanding pivots in the sense that, you know, you know, for example, there are people that actually count them out and do all this other stuff. I I don't. It's meaningless to me. And those expanding pivots are people. Can anybody tell me what what the price what's going on when that price action is happening? When we make higher highs, and then higher lows, and then higher high, what's going on? Those are stops being hit on both sides, right? That's when I want to start to look for opportunity, right? Because Stops are being hit on both sides. People are getting hurt. As people get hurt, that's my opportunity, right? Make sense? This is a 2 out of 5 rating for seeing the opportunity. I agree. Ouija, that's right. But I'm going to drag you to 3 if it kills me, Ouija. The concept I am understanding is that we have a force pivot and or nexus. Go horizontal go out of the horizontal area and come back for the entry. Well, that is true, but I'd like to actually, I bet I want to eventually get you to the point where you're ready to trade at that first pullback, Aaron. But unfortunately, most people are still going to be at the, either this entry, which didn't form for us, or this entry, which did form from, from us. Okay? But I'm going to keep trying to push you this way, Aaron. Okay? This is easier to see. This is even easier to see, but I'm going to try and push you over here. It's not going to be a short thing, but I'll just do that. It's, it's, some, it is, it's exactly like last week's Canada lesson. The last three have all been the same op type of opportunity, just kind of drawn out in different ways. I'm, I know different lines work differently in different people's minds, so I'm trying it with different lines. Is the major clue the nexus and the force pivot? It, well, it is for this one, yes. But if you if you if I just took out the lines, Aaron, if I zap the lines, and I did it on the other three, you'd see that it's the same idea, basic low, stepping in with a stop below the basic low. You need a ch and you need a change of behavior. Yeah. So the mass shifts. When you see the mass shift, you're willing to buy and you expect a higher low. But I don't want you biting at every higher low because you might expect it here, okay? So we need to see horizontal, okay? Any other questions? Okay, guys. Uh, okay, Peter, give me an update on the NYMEX. I'd like to hear that. Everybody have a great Monday. I'll see you later in the week. I'll see some of you in mentoring. Everybody take care. Um, I will update the Google page about uh, uh, what's going on uh, as I know more about September. But we got plenty of time now, now that we have commitments. So everybody take care. I'll see you later in the week. Uh, I, I w today I'm, I will not be in midday, no. Busy, busy, busy this week. Too many teenagers. I'll see you all soon.